Yes, indeed. You get them balls to the wall, man. <laughs> That's except with our opening tune here. This is a balls to the wall program this evening as the Mighty Moose Girl is off to the Blue Ox Bluegrass Festival right there in her hometown of Eau Claire, Wisconsin. And they've been doing a live stream uh, feed there from the Blue Ox Festival. And that's been pretty good stuff, but, you know, I think I've watched, oh, many hours of that of that show yesterday and today here. Uh, and uh, I, I may, I may have had a lifetime supply of bluegrass. <laughs> no, no, I'm just kidding. I like the bluegrass. <laughs> but that's a lot of bluegrass to absorb in a couple of days there. Uh, and there's more tomorrow, and I think there's still some on Sunday, but I'm not positive on that. It looked like on the uh, jamgrass.tv site, it said through the 15th, so uh, we'll see. We'll see what happens on Sunday. Anyway, um, how the hell y'all doing? Yeah, it's, it's, this is Balls to the Wall, man. Freaker's ball is off for this week because, as I said, the Moose Girl's uh, out at the festival. She'll be back next week, I believe. Anyway, don't, don't, don't put a uh, def. Don't write, write that in pencil, because you never know with the moose and festival season being what it is. So we'll find out more about that later on, but uh, not tonight. Uh, anyway, so welcome to everybody out there in all the various places that the show goes out to: reallyliberty.org, freedomsnetwork.com, minds.com. Uh, those uh, you may have seen the notices on the Twitter, uh, wherever else you may see it out there, uh, welcome to you all. But if you want to watch the videos, yeah, uh, if you're on rlmradio.xyz, uh, easy for me to say, um, come on over to the uh, reallibertymedia.com page website and uh, click on the show pages there, and you'll see Freaker's Ball right there at the top. Might be the second one down. I don't know. Anyway, go to this, the Freakers Ball Show page. You get a video. You get the chat. You get all that wonderful stuff. So come on over. Be part of the show. You get to talk with all the great folks that are over here in the RLM, the Pound Pound or Real Liberty Media chat room on irc.freno.net. And we always have a great group of folks here tonight. It, it does seem, though, however, at the, in these summer days, uh, there's a few less folks around than uh, the normal in the winter, of course, the people, they, they don't want to go out. But in the summer, they do. So, uh, we get a few more in the winter than we do in the summer. <laughs> that being said, howdy to all the folks that are here. we got the barman and myself and Mr. D, see? Uh, we got Asmodeus, the uh, middle-of-the-night duck killer. we got Chalcedoni and Miss Gramsci, who did her show, Rocket Grammy's Rocket Chair, just a little earlier. We got the Java Doctor in Mr. Meester Meister Brow down there in the hotter than hell part of Arizona that he lives in. We got the wonderful Miss Kate. Uh, Mr. Rob works in uh, Trust No One, aka Rome's. And uh, of course, the Vanna White and Weather Dork bots are always present. Miss Beth Z was with, uh, with us this evening in Phantom and Mr. Beetle. Circle, probably not here, probably sleeping, uh, catching some Z's as. It's the middle of the night for her. Uh, we got Cyborg, Noodle, and Dakota, and Frumpy, and Gromit, and JJ's, and Kiss, and Moe, and oh, there's Moose Girl down at the bottom, and uh, hanging out with the smart ass. Yeah, so uh, all the great folks that are here on uh, the RLM chat on Free Note, and those of you that are not on the chat, welcome as well. So, uh, what the hell? Um, it's been a I, I, not, not really how much a whole bunch happened this week in my life. Um, I, I uh, on Monday, I think it was Monday, it might have been Tuesday. No, it was Monday, I think. Yeah, Tuesday, whatever. Doesn't matter. Um, I was outside. I was uh, hacking down some uh, weeds and bush brushes and stuff like that. And at the end of my uh, my uh, weed hacker, it's an electric one, a uh, Ryobi unit. Um, I have this thing, it's called a grass gator, and uh, it, it actually uh, does a lot more than just grass. It cuts through, uh, like, s small branches and stuff like that. So it's pretty darn good. It's a powerful little thing. Anyway, though, on Monday I was out there, and 
I guess I caught a rock with with one end of this thing, and and, and one of the blades just flew off somewhere, broke off, and uh, the little tab that holds it in went went with it. <laughs> so I went in and uh, got on Amazon and ordered me a new uh, a new one there, a new uh, grass skater thing, and uh, it came in today. And once I got it, uh, it it's it's about 50% bigger, maybe more than that, 70% bigger, uh, the the round part that holds the blades into place. Then I remembered, I never ordered the grass gator before. Uh, well, I did, but not. I, I ordered the grass gator with the, the, the rope, or whatever you call it, the string. <laughs> or, or, no, it was the grass gator with the plastic blades, it wasn't the grass cutter. Anyway, so when I ordered, then at at some point I had to replace the blades. They got the metal ones, and I had to like go through and drill out the different things and such. That's why I never got this bigger one that I got now. Uh, anyway, the bigger one fits on there and it works fine. It's a bit heavier, uh, and I think it cuts through some bigger brush for whatever reason. Maybe it's because they're newer blades. I I don't know. Um, uh, but it but it, it adds a little extra vibration. So after about an hour of that today, my uh, I could feel my arms just going. <laughs> anyway, not that that's interesting or important to anybody other than me, but uh, I, I found it interesting. Anyway, they're a good good thing if you have a uh, a decent weed whacker. Uh, I would recommend you use a, a gas a gas one. Mine's electric, like I said, but they. Uh, rare to find a, a, a electric one as good as the one that I have um, that actually accepts various attachments and things because mine does I, I've got all kinds of various attachments for it edger and a, a hedge hedge cutter and various things and they just snap into the the motor pole anyway whatever it's cool uh, you can go on the Amazon and get them they're like for the for the uh, grass gator I think it was like 12 bucks or something like that Whatever, it's, it's, it's uh, you know, it's cheap for the work that it'll do for you. So, uh, hooray. Um, other than that, uh, I don't know if I have any garden updates. I've been, uh, I got some tomatoes sprung up. Um, so they're just sprouts and uh, the other stuff's out there growing a little bit. Not very fast. This stuff grows slow here. And, uh, yeah, who knows why. Could be the soil, could be the uh, altitude, could be the water. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> and it's been cooler than uh, usual up until like this week. It started really getting up into the 80 range and 80 plus range. So we'll see how that goes. Um, let's see. Anything else interesting going on here in the land of Moriarty? No, no, I can't really think of nothing else. Hometown, what? And, and I'm calling this hometown. I've been here now. What is today? Six fourteen. All right. Next Friday will be fourteen years. Fourteen years next Friday uh, is when I actually took o occupancy of this home or ownership of this home. Uh, so that's that's. Uh, it doesn't seem like you know maybe couple years I've been here, but 14 years I've been here. Yep, so. <laughs> anyway, I know. Throw a minute, throw a minute. Let's play some music and we'll come back and uh, maybe talk about some other, something more interesting than my life. Because <laughs> my life is not a thrill fest. All right. Um, ba -ba 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 -ba. Here we go. Cobra and the Lotus. Oh, yeah. That's some nice stuff right there, let me tell you. <laughs> Joe Bonamassa and uh, Jimmy Barnes on vocals doing Deep Purple's Lazy. Ah, oh, man, they, they tear it up. Excellent, excellent. Before that, we had Sammy Hager. Hagar, excuse me, Hagar and the Wabaritas doing rock candy uh, in St. Louis. Uh, you know, watching that video, watching Sammy Hagar, 
Man, he's 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 such a cool dude. He's all over the place, dancing around, signing people's stuff, all kinds of various stuff. Uh, people throwing stuff up on stage, and he's he's just like nonstop movement, Mr. Sammy. Never misses a beat uh, in, in his in his vocals, and he's just having a good old time up there. Uh, I don't know what year what year was that uh, actually recorded? Does it say here? 2006, so uh, 13 years ago. Um, Wow, yeah, he's, he's just a, a phenomenal performer. Anyway, we kicked it off with Cobra and the, the Lotus doing Soldier, an excellent anti-war tunage there for you all. Um, so, uh, yeah, yeah, just good, 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 fun stuff, man. I, I like, I like, I like this rock and roll style stuff. I don't know why, I just do. Um, anyway, how did the Cowboy Tech, he just joined on in there into the chat room, and uh, glad to have him here joining with us this evening. Did I get that right? I think I got that right. Okay. <laughs> uh, I don't even know what that song is. I don't know where that came from. It was in my request list, and it was my request, and I still, I still don't remember it. So, uh, well, we'll see what it is on I want to get that next set fired up. All right, and uh, oh, 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 look at that. So, yeah, hopefully you're all having a fun Friday night out there doing whatever the hell it is you're doing. You're you're uh, as probably, I guess, at home if you're here tuning into the program. So uh, having a nice casual evening, I suppose. Uh, oh. uh, anyway, um, what the hell was I going to say? Oh, it don't matter. <laughs> oh man. Uh let's uh let's see what we got to talk about here other than, than my life cuz you know, my life is not it's just really not all that exciting. <laughs> oh yeah, this is uh, for any of you that do any kind of uh baking at home if you uh purchase the King Arthur brand flour uh, and five pound bags some of them have been recalled or on a re recall presently um, the, the uh, says here Vermont based King Arthur flour is recalling more than 14,000 cases of flour over concerns the product could contain E. coli and I kind of wondered about that you know because well you're going to bake it. And when you bake it, it's going to kill that E. coli. So I, I don't really think there'd be too much of a concern unless maybe you're snorting some flour or something or eating it raw, which I can't imagine doing. Um, but, uh, yeah, if you are if you have King Arthur flour, uh, they have a three best used by dates here, 12-7-2019 uh, and, and some codes. Uh, 12 2019 12 14 2019 now I do buy this brand and I have uh, a few bags of it there in my pantry um, it says here though however the product sold through the King Arthur flower website Baker's catalog or store in Norwich are not included in the recall so I don't buy mine through those places so mine were had a possibility of being included but I checked the codes here versus mine and uh, mine are not in that batch that is possibly contaminated with the E. coli and again like I said I, I don't know even if it were um, should, should you be concerned if you're just gonna I mean if you're using it to bake with once you once you've done the baking then you're you're good to go I, I guess maybe if you eat like if you're making cookie dough out of it or something and you eat raw cookie dough uh, but how much how much raw cookie dough could you possibly eat? Um, <laughs> anyway, so according to the FDA, ADM Milling Company told King Arthur Flour that the, that certain wheat used to make these lots of King Arthur Flour has been linked to an on ongoing outbreak of E. coli in, infections. You may remember, um, I don't know what it was, four or five months ago, uh, I reported on uh, some Pillsbury, the gold medal uh flour that the five pound bags also uh, I don't know why it's limited to five pound bags although those are the most common size of bags to buy uh, either way no illnesses have been reported 
uh, in connection with this particular flower as uh, yet. So uh, if you have that, uh, it says here either throw it away, which no, they it costs me money, or return it to the place of purchase. And I buy it at various places that I go, whether it be Kroger or Moriarty Foods or uh, Jet or uh, other online places that I buy from, buy foods from. Uh, so, uh, yeah, you just uh, keep, keep an eye out if you're a baker. It's your public service announcement for the evening. <laughs> well, one of them anyway. <laughs> Let's see what else we got here for you. Oh, this one. This, uh, I would like to be surprised by this, but for some reason, I'm just not. <laughs> Uh, from uh, twitchy.com, government, at its best, report, all criminal charges dropped against eight people involved in the Flint water scandal. Yep, imagine that, all charges dropped. Yep, so you should probably find a chair, it says here, but we've already read the headline, so that's the part you probably need a chair for. Uh, anyway, uh, you should probably find a chair because you're going to need, need to sit down for this news. Prosecutors say they are dismissing all criminal charges against eight people in the Flint water scandal and starting the investigation over? <laughs> are, they, are they trying to say their whole investigation up until this point? has just been a total waste of time and money and they're going to let the people that are culpable for 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 the these problems just let them go uh, prosecutors say they're dismissing all criminal charges against gay people in the flint water scandal scandal poisonings and starting the investigation over again and they can let that run for a few years and then they'll either find nothing at that point or let those next people go and say we're going to start it again. Uh, the eight people include former Michigan Health Director Nick Lyon. He was accused of failing to timely inform the public about an outbreak of Legionnaire's disease when Flint... When Flint? It's still going on. What are you talking about, when Flint? When Flint was using improperly treated water from the Flint River in 2014 and 2015. So, yeah, it's been four or five years of that right now already. Uh, and now, suddenly, eh, let them all go. We don't care. And then it's got a bunch of tweets here. People saying, what the fuck, what the hell? You've got to be kidding, right? <laughs> no. No, they're not kidding. Flint's government may be a joke, but this is not. Uh, from uh, Meech over there on the Twitter. He says, not surprised at all. Uh, bang up job, guys. Uh, someone's playing with the law, the law game genie again. Uh, GP. Well, I don't know what that means. So Flint's, uh, so Flint's government is corrupt in Michigan, or the feds. Prosecutors are inept. <laughs> yes, yes they are. <laughs> Amazing government at its best, says Bob Malik. Oh boy, and and the LB there from the Twitter says, "LOL, ain't the government the best? Yeah, the best at screwing people. Uh, that that's basically what that comes down to. There, um, they'll they'll never hold the other government people liable or responsible for the damages, uh, and they and they're just talking about." Well, the Legionnaires part, they, all the other damages that were done to people, uh, and, and all the all the pain they had to go through in order to even try and get any kind of clean, fresh water. Just, 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 just amazing. All right. Um, ba -ba 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 -ba. What's this one? Okay. Okay. Who out there eats breakfast cereal? Any of y'all eat any breakfast cereal uh, from uh, the major manufacturers or even the knockoff brand manufacturers? 
Are, are you are you on those? Do you like those? Do you eat those? <laughs> eh, you may want to not. <laughs> Uh, and, and I reported on an uh, earlier report about this. I don't know what it was, six, eight, twelve months ago. Uh, but here it is again, because they just did it again. This article just came out yesterday, day before yesterday, uh, on Echo Watch, ECO Watch, Eco Echo, whatever, uh, Watch.com. Uh, new round of tests finds breakfast cereals still full of glyphosate, says the EWG. Which is, I guess, the Echo Watch Group. Um, is, is that what? The, I don't know. EWG. Um, all right. Many best sellers in the cereal aisle continue to have trace amounts of the weed killer glyphosate, according to a new report published Wednesday. Oh, it's the Environmental Working Group. That's the EWG. Okay. The herbicide it was detected in 21 oat-based products, meaning. Cheerios, uh, oatmeal, uh, various other. All but four of them can contain the levels of glyphosate higher than, than what the EWG scientists deem safe for children. Not to mention you. Uh, this is the third round of glyphosate tests by uh, EWG, which receives funding from organic food companies, according to its own disclosures. Uh, the new round confirms the findings from the first two tests in August and October last year. Tests of 94 samples of oat-based foods found glyphosate, glyphosate, I, I never could say that word properly, uh, well, as far as my name, uh, as far as I know anyway. Um, anyway, in, in all but two samples, with 74 samples at levels of glyphosate above the EWG's health benchmark. The latest analysis, these high levels of weed killer were detected in General Mills Honey Nut Cheerios, medley crunch at 833 parts per billion, uh, Cheerios with 729 parts per billion. Uh, the EWG's health benchmark for children is 160. So that's like six, seven times the amount, at least six times the amount there. EWG says a child would only need to eat a single 60-gram serving of food with glyphosate level of 160 parts per billion to reach a maximum dose. <laughs> Why is there a maximum? Why is there any dose possible that's allowed? Uh, anyway, to reach a maximum dose, it considers safe, according to the press release. No, no, no amount of this stuff is safe. Um... As the latest tests show, a box of Cheerios or other oat-based foods on store shelves today almost certainly comes with a dose of the cancer-causing weed killer. According to Olga Nadenko, Ph.D., Vice President for Science Investigations at EWG, uh, the manufacturers insist, of course they do, the manufacturers insist their products are safe and that the EWG's findings are unprecedented. Yeah, because nobody else has ever tested this before. That's why it's unprecedented. Uh, and before cutting your kids' carbs, it's worth noting that no case of cancer has ever been linked to eating breakfast cereal. <laughs> Boy, you guys really, really do try and stretch it out there, don't you? Anyway, EWG's study was never submitted to peer review. They tested it in a lab, and they found levels that were there. Why? What are you gonna What are you gonna review? Yep, that's the numbers that you did. All right, they look good to me. Anyway, uh, nor were they published in a scientific journal. So, <laughs> what's your point? All right, and EWG created its own standard of toxicity. As it explains on its website, its standard of toxicity for glyphosate exposure is about one one hundredth of the California threshold because they love poisoning their citizens out there in California, A, eh? which is about one one hundredth of the U.S. Environmental Protection Agency standard. In other words, EWG's limit for consuming glyphosate is around one ten thousandth of what the EPA deems is safe. Well, yeah, since Monsanto, Bayer, whatever you want to call them, 
runs the EPA, you can imagine their numbers are highly inflated and they don't care if you get any kind of damage to yourself from eating the crap that they produce. The latest findings come on the heels of three civil cases in California that have ordered Bear AG slash Monsanto's uh, to pay more than $2.2 billion in damages for cancer caused by exposure to Roundup. Thousands, thousands more lawsuits have been filed, which has caused investors to flee Bear. Rightfully so. Its share price is half of its 52-week high. Glyphosate's toxicity has been the center of controversy since 2015, Oh, it's been the center of controversy for a lot longer than that, you morons. Anyway, uh, when the International Agency for Research on Cancer, a, a, a part of the WHO, the WHO, who, oh, it's not an owl. It's not the WHO, the, or the rock group, as Hal would say. It is the World Health Organization. Cla health Organization. <laughs> Classified it as a probably carcinogenic to humans. Probably, definitely absolutely without a question carcinogenic to humans then in 2017 glyphosate was classified as a known carcinogen carcinogen by california's office of, of environmental health it's a known carcinogen yet they still have what they consider safe levels of consumption <laughs> all right all right all right so yeah Eat your poison, kids. Eat your poison. Suck it down. Mm-mm, good. So good. It's just delicious. It adds flavor to your foods, foodstuffs. <laughs> anyway, I found this today on Financial Times. Uh-oh. They're not going to let me see it? Uh, I can't see the article. I saw it earlier today. All right, they're not going to let me see it. All right, they're not going to let me see the article. Um, it's on Financial Times, and I know they're generally a subscription website, but I clicked the link earlier today, and it let me go in there and look at it. Oh, well, the headline of that article that I can no longer see was, Bear to invest 5 billion euros in alternative weed killers. What the headline doesn't say is uh, they expect to do something in about 10 years. Um, so let people die for the next 10 years, and then and then, <laughs> and then you can... <laughs> and then maybe it will come up with something that won't be tested for uh, carcinogens for another 50 years after that. I, I don't know. Glyphosate's been around for a long time. So, uh, yeah. Um, I, 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 like I, said, I saw this article earlier and they let me look at it but now now it won't let me see it so dignitic alright since I can't do that one we'll do this what we'll do this one we'll do this one it's, which of equal shock not shock to any of us shock to the uh, regular folk out there that people that don't pay attention to what's going on in the world. Not a shock to you. Here it is. From the freethoughtproject.com Lawsuit proves Health and Human Services, HHS, has not filed required vaccine safety reports with Congress in 30 years. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm shocked. <laughs> oh, God. A lawsuit against the HHS has forced the agency to admit that they never, not once, filed the required biannual reports with Congress on increasing vaccine safety. Well, because they're doing the opposite of increasing vaccine safety, uh, they are making it more and more poisonous as time goes on. Right. After an uptick in lawsuits in the 1980s, the vaccine manufacturers 
essentially held the government hostage and threatened to stop making vaccines, blackmailed, unless the government took responsibility for vaccine injury lawsuits. The National Childhood Vaccine Injury Act of 1986 was enacted when the taxpayers, uh, which made taxpayers liable for injuries caused by vaccines and not the manufacturers. So you go out there and get these, a lot of them now, mandatory poisons injected into your veins, and if you get injured or your child gets injured, who's, who's liable? You are. <laughs> You're forced to put poison into your body, and then you are liable if something they did causes you harm. Let that soak in a little bit, would you? Let that, let, just mull, chew on that. Yeah, I, that, 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 <laughs> it's, it's freaking absurd. Anyway, the removal of liability has created the incentive to turn out new vaccines with very little testing. Uh, the only testing they do is, will it go into a syringe and then go into somebody's vein? Yep, it will. Okay, it's good. As companies don't have to worry about financial hardships for injuring people, which in turn has shaped the situation we find ourselves in today. In the last two decades, we've witnessed a, a near 300% increase in the number of CDC-recommended vaccines. So if 20 years ago, maybe you got five vaccines a year, now you, you get 15. If you got 10, 20 years, I don't know what the numbers are, so I can't tell you. Uh, if you got 10 vaccines a year, 20 years ago, now you get 30. <laughs> As vaccine, <coughs> excuse me. <coughs> As vaccine companies no longer have any incentive to rigorously or even minorly test the safety of their vaccines, the responsibility of testing vaccine safety was passed on to the U.S. government, which, of course, they don't do either. Now, a lawsuit filed against the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services on behalf of the Informed Consent Action Network, ICANN, not the same ICANN that runs the uh, Internet web, web addresses, no, this has only got one in, uh, ICANN, um, and Counsel Robert F. Kennedy Jr., really, um, has revealed the biannual reports for these safety studies as required by Congress have never happened. Not once. <laughs> I, I, uh, nobody should be surprised by this. Not, not in the slightest. All right, so instead of submitting reports to Congress on the safety of vaccines, HHS has devoted its resources to increasing... Vaccine uptake. Yeah. <laughs> well, we don't know if they're safe or not, but we're going to triple the amount that you get. <laughs> As ICANN explains, in contrast, HHS takes the other portions of the 1986 Act, which require promoting vac vaccine uptake very seriously, spending billions annually and generating a steady stream of reports on how to improve Vaccine uptake, meaning how could they get more and more people to take these poisons into their veins? Regrettably, HHS has chosen to focus its obligation to increase vaccine uptake and defend against any claim vac vaccines cause harm in the National Injury Vaccine Compensation Program, a.k.a. the Vaccine Court, to such a degree that it has abandoned its vaccine safety responsibilities. If, well, they didn't abandon them, they never even took them on. If HHS is not, as confirmed in uh, court this week, even fulfilling the simple task of filing a biannual report on vaccine safety improvements, there is little hope that HHS is actually tack tackling the much harder job of actually improving vaccine safety. Of course they're not. What this means? This does not mean, as some have claimed, the United States government has never conducted a vaccine safety test. Spreading this disinformation 
Oh, prove they've done one. Prove they've done one. That's what those reports are for. Spreading this inf information, uh, disinformation does a disservice to folks at ICANN and RFK Jr. Multiple departments have put out reports on vaccine safety. However, many of the departments are staffed with and even headed up by former insiders from the vaccine companies. Huh. Imagine that. Furthermore, <laughs> it exposes a serious problem with HHS. For the last three decades, HHS has failed to file these reports, and Congress don't care. They have no problem with it whatsoever. They don't even think about it. Matter of fact, if they actually got one of these reports, they'd just probably rubber stamp it and shove it through. What's more, on top of not filing the required safety reports, the HHS did abide by part of the NCVIA that required them to push more vaccines on you. Clearly illustrate, which of course being they're headed up by former insiders from the former continuing insiders from the vaccine companies, which clearly illustrates that where the priorities lie, distribution first, safety, it says second here, but I'm going to say not at all. <laughs> Not, not whatsoever. And if you report a problem with the vaccines, you will be labeled a tinfoil hat-wearing conspiracy theorist, which, of course, I am. <laughs> oh, I think this first one is a mashup here. Um, <laughs> I'm going to play a new set here. Uh, so, yeah, I think the first one's a little mashup. And uh, I'm not positive, but I'm pretty sure it was a good one. So, uh, where, where's my where's my camera? There it is. All right. All right. I enjoy uh, this here. This is Slayer and Katrina in the Waves. All right. That there was uh, Sweet Jane as performed by Mott the Hoople. Uh, I, I didn't know who wrote that song. I was pretty sure it was a Lou Reed song. Uh, but it's not... Well, it was. Lou Reed did write it. But he wrote it as part of the Velvet Underground. Uh, and uh, then it was uh, recorded by Velvet Underground. And then also by Lou Reed. And, and then by Monta Hoople. So, uh, yeah. Good song. Good stuff, man. That's classic old uh, music there. Uh, that video put out by... Monroe's Retro back in 2018, about a year ago. All right, before that, we had the Rolling Stones covering Bob Dylan's Like a Rolling Stone <laughs> off of their album Bridges Bridges to Bremen, which I think comes out, um, I don't know when it comes out. Oh, I, it looks like it uh, came out many, many years ago. Um, okay, yeah, it says, uh, this is the full-length show performed by the Rolling Stones on the fifth and final leg of the Bridges to Babylon tour at Wester Stadion on September 2nd, 1998. However, that video, which is put out on the Rolling Stones official channel here on the YouTube on uh, May 28th this year, so, um, yeah, cool, man. Uh, Cowboy Tech says he missed Moose Girl today as... Has she been having fun? You can bet on that. She loves that Blue Ox Festival. All right, we kicked it off there. Like I said, I thought it was a mashup. But yes, it was definitely a mashup. Uh, Slayer and Katrina in the Waves doing Chemical Warfare. And don't it feel good? <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> Let me tell you. That's, a good, that's good stuff. Bill McClintock was the uh, poster of that video there on the YouTube's. Um, uh, very, very enjoyable stuff there. Uh, humorous and well done, both at the same time. So, uh, yeah, it's, uh, that's good, good, good shit, Maynard, as they say on, uh, Maynard G. Krebs. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> oh, and thanks for the Puff Puff Pass there in the chat, Mr. Cowboy Tech. Always appreciated. <laughs> oh man, I'll tell you, let's uh, little, uh, little. Uh, what's going on here? 
Where'd my deal go? I was just someplace, and I and I I lost my spot that I was going to do. What was I going to do? Not that one. Not that one. Huh. I don't know where I was. I had another one marked, but I don't know where it was, and so we'll just do this one. See, I try and mark some songs when I'm doing this, the show solo. Uh, during the playing set, I have to do multiple things during the set. I have to go through and and uh, mark videos for the next set and, and do tags and links and all that fun crap, you know, um, <laughs> for what well, for whatever is coming up. Uh, it's 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 a it's not quite as easy as it easily as it is uh, uh, when when the Moose Girls here are with us uh, on the, the program, as they say, as they say, as I say. I don't know who they is. All right, Proton Mail. What? How dare you, Proton Mail? If true, if true. Proton Mail denies it, but, uh, eh, well, you, you decide for yourself. Proton Mail denies that it offers real-time surveillance assistance. Yep, a Swiss lawyer has accused Proton Mail, the company that has initiated offering IP logging upon request of Swiss authorities. Proton Mail, the famous end-to-end -end encrypted email service from Switzerland, has denied the claims made by a Swiss lawyer, Martin Steiger, Steiger regarding the company's involvement in voluntary assistance to Swiss Authorita for real-time surveillance. The head of the Cybercrime Competence Center, Zurich, and Public Prosecutor Stephen Walder, uh, stated that the company does not offer voluntary real-time surveillance, but is obliged to help authorities in certain situations. <laughs> yeah, right. Um, obliged to. Uh, is there nothing safe? However, Mr. Steiger publicly posted about Proton's Proton Mail's offer stating that the company has initiated uh, offering IP logging upon request of Swiss authorities. For your information, a Zurich, Switzerland based lawyer attended a presentation earlier in May where he mentioned Proton Mail, and later Mr. Steiger tweeted from his Twitter account that, lear that he learned at that event. Uh, that the encrypted email service provider voluntarily offers for real-time surveillance. Well, you know, if they're offering IP addresses, since it is encrypted, uh, and you should be safe unless they're also offering them uh, a, a decoding algorithm for that encryption, um, VPN! Use a VPN! All right, anyway... Contrary to Mr. Steiger's claims, Walder states that he is being misquoted in that he only said that Proton Mail is a reliable assistance provider. What does that mean? Steiger immediately responded that he has reported everything he learned at the event accurately, and to prove his point, he cited the company's recent transparency report in his blog post, which read that, in April 2019, at the request of Swiss Judiciary, in a case of clear criminal conduct, we enabled IP logging against a specific user account, which is engaged in illegal activities, which contravenes Swiss law. According to the report, Proton Mail enabled IP logging in April 2019, which actually falls into the category of criminal misconduct per Swiss law. <laughs> Proton Mail claims that the use of the term voluntary is rather misleading because the company is obligated to assist authorities just like every other company does, not just in Switzerland, but around the world. Proton Mail cleared the air in one of its tweets that read, 
all Swiss providers are obligated by law to assist law enforcement in criminal cases. And the law requires us to enable IP logging in criminal cases, uh, meaning they, they log all IPs. That's what, that's what that means, because they don't know what's, what's going to be considered a, a criminal or not. Anyway, hence the company is not offering its services on a voluntary basis. Sure you are. <laughs> sure you are. <laughs> Proton Mail has also claimed that they offer end-to-end -end encryption and therefore they cannot share unencrypted messages. You got the algorithm, you know how to unencrypt it, uh, of its users to a court of law no matter how much it is pressured through court orders. According to Proton Mail, its uh, terms and conditions prohibit users from using this service for carrying out illegal activities. Duh! Well, which is why, when such infringements occur, the company is obligated to help the police, but this only happens when the company receives an order from some prosecutor or Swiss court. Proton Mail does not voluntarily offer assistance. We do so when ordered by a Swiss court or prosecutor, as we are obligated to follow the law in all criminal cases. Furthermore, end-to-end -end encryption means we cannot be forced to provide message contents. Yeah, so just use a VPN. I, I, I think that's, you know, if, if you, you're encrypted already, that's good. Uh, but uh, if you don't want to have your IPs logged, that's your way around it. So, I, I know ProtonMail is a good service, and uh, generally speaking, but whatever man all right this um a little little different a music news kind of feel good story uh we all love Ronnie James Dio don't we hopefully most of us okay this article posted on the ultimate guitar.com hailstorms lizzie hale remembers how Ronnie James Dio treated her and the band when touring with Heaven and Hell. So during a conversation with the metal with the Metal Master Kingdom, Hailstorm, singer and guitarist Lizzie Hale, talked about touring with Heaven and Hell. The band consisting of Black Sabbath members Tony Iommi, Tony Iommi, Geezer Butler, Ronnie James Dio, and Vinnie Apice uh, back in the 2000s, when the group was active, the musicians said, We opened up for Heaven and Hell with Dio. That was a monumental point. Just being able to hang out with those guys, those legends, and they were so nice. They treated us like we had already been friends. It was like Uncle Ronnie. Uncle Ronnie! <laughs> yeah... I remember, like, they, they they wouldn't leave our our dressing room. It was so funny because they got to the point where at one one or two in the morning, they all walked us out to our RV at the time where there were a bunch of people outside. And he's like, Lizzie, don't leave. I want to say goodbye to you, but I, I got to say hi to people first. Like, okay. <laughs> so we just... Stayed there and watched him sign everything for everybody, take a picture, and then he still came back to say goodbye. I told Ronnie, you don't have to come and say goodbye. Obviously, if you want you can, you want to go to sleep, you can. And he looks at me, put his fingers on my face, and he's like, Lizzie, this is just a moment in time. You're never going to remember all the places you play or all the people you meet. But they are going to remember meeting you for the rest of their lives. So make it good for every single one of them, okay? I was like, yes, sir. So obviously, I carried that with me. I matured. But it wasn't until recently that I'm like, you know, he did that for me. He did that so I could have that moment. I will never forget that conversation. So that was one of those things that I think about a lot. Rest in peace, Mr. Roddy. We love you, Roddy James Dio. Still. And uh, we miss you. Uh, you, were, you were amazing. Uh, 
says it's interesting. It's it's not about rocking us rocking out and them listening or buying the CD for me. It's about the camaraderie. When I grew up, I I I, I was a, a very weird child from the time I was eleven, uh, just for my own interest in music. I went to this sleepover. I, I moved to into a new place. The new neighbor kids invited me over for a sleepover. A bunch of girls like bring your favorite CDs. So what did I bring? Alice Cooper, Love It to Death. And I I'd only get past the first chorus. So, so by the time I was 11, I was an odd kid. And every night, I get to be in front of people. And I, I don't even say in front of people anymore, but just like surrounded by like-minded people. And all these girls that are just like me. And so I, I don't know. It's a party every night, and we do it for each other, you know? It's like... I get to do my own thing. But then they're also getting me absolutely so much. You have to respect that. Absolutely, it's gotten to the point in my life where my passion is also my affliction. As in, I need to do it every day. So even like backstage when I was talking to you, every day I pick up my instrument and I go through... I just have a file of constant rotating lyrics, titles, ideas, riffs and memos and all that and I put those things together every single day let me put it this way if our schedule died tomorrow and if everyone said okay uh, we need to do a record right now I'm pretty sure I'd have it, in, have it in time last year Lizzie recalled opening for Heaven and Hell in Atlantic City in uh, New Jersey 2009 well, what turned out to be Dio's final performance she told Hawaii Public Radio that was so crazy it's funny because with Sabbath, I had gotten to introduce Sabbath with Dio first as a kid. Uh, introduced to Sabbath with Dio first as a kid. It was my introduction into Sabbath. And then I worked my way backwards into the Aussie world. It was one of those fluke accidents that happened. We were in between tours and kind of going home for a couple of days off. Coheed and Cambria were opening that tour. And, and they had dropped off the last date, so basically it just kind of worked out perfectly. Management called us like, do you want to do this? Absolutely. I will crawl if I have to. <laughs> you got to love Lizzie. <laughs> She's awesome. Anyway, only uh, one show only, so we weren't even on the tour with them. But it was just so cool because this is part of the reason that it kind of seeped into your brain as a kid. This foundation, the reason that you're actually doing what you're doing, pretty much, they were they were just so wonderful, just like such amazing rocker dudes. It's so funny when I think about it now, because they were so nice to us, and they hung out with us all night until we left, and, and took the time to welcome us with open arms, even though they had no idea who we were. The fact that we were so incredibly... They were so incredibly inclusive. I'll take that with me forever. So they got the uh, some of the, the the video here from the Heaven and Hell show um, embedded on this. And uh, yeah, man, it's fucking uh, Ozzy, Lizzie, uh, Ronnie, and terrific people. Terrific people. That's what we're talking about right there. They they are they are terrific people. And, uh, yeah, so, cool. <laughs> Alrighty then. Uh, which way? Which way should I go? Let's do this. We got, we got two, two male USPS related stories to cover here. I'll do this one first from uh, WDBJ7.com. Uh, I'm not sure what city this is out of. Uh, it doesn't matter. Five-hour sentence. Five-hour sentence for a mail carrier who kept 5,000 pieces of mail. <laughs> uh, the story is out of Norfolk, Virginia. A uh, Virginia judge sentenced a former letter carrier to five hours in jail after she hid more than 5,000 pieces of mail in her house. 
The Virginia pilot reports that Toya Worlds told the investigators she kept the mail in her home because it was too time-consuming to do her job. I, I, I mean, to deliver it all. Just too time-consuming to deliver it all. Police found it while investigating a homicide in her house. <laughs> her her husband, Anthony Allen Worlds, faces a murder, murder trial next month. Investigators say it does not appear she stole anything from the 5,000 pieces of mail. <clears throat> but that, um, ah. All right. Although some letters and parcels were opened, that might be uh, deliverable, have been returned. Uh, those items that were might have been deliverable returned to the Postal Service. Now, let me just say this about this, because this is the part that's... Did they overlook it? I, I don't know. People are expecting to get certain bills or checks or other correspondence that are time-based, time-related. You need to get these things. And if she did not get those to the people that they were addressed to, uh, that they were supposed to go to, and she only got five hours for that? This is this is crazy. This is crazy um, that, that that would happen because think of all those people that got screwed over because they did not get whatever it is that they got, and especially like you know maybe elderly people not getting their 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 social security or or, or whatever other payments from from other places, uh, and and they they had to try and figure out a way to to make do, or people that got you know. Uh, had late bills because their bill never came in and uh, they need that bill in order to be able to pay it uh, anyway whatever it's just nuts that that, that would happen and, and then she would only get five hours for that of course if they catch you with a joint in the wrong place uh, then you may be in there for five years or more <clears throat> speaking of joints well not really joints <laughs> United States Postal Service unveils new policy on mailing hemp-derived CBD products. Uh, this is posted on MarijuanaMovement.net. United States Postal Service confirmed in an expanded policy update last week that hemp products are legal to mail under certain conditions since the crop is no longer a federally controlled substance. In a in guideline published uh, in the agency's postal bulletins, USPS said that it has received numerous inquiries from commercial entities and individuals wishing to use the mail to transport CBD oil and various other products derived from the cannabis plant. Since the passage of the 2018 Farm Bill, which legalized hemp. According to the institution, circulated internal guidelines on the matter in March and is now externally clarifying what it considers legally mailable. Here's the language of the new policy. Hemp and hemp-based products, including CBD with the tetrahydrocannabinol THC, a concentration of such hemp or its derivatives not exceeding 0.3% limit are permitted to be mailed only when A. Uh, the, the mailer complies with all applicable federal, state, and local laws such as the Agricultural Act of 2014 and the Agricultural Improvement Act of 2018 pertaining to hemp product production, processing, distribution, sales, and B. The mailer retains records establishing compliance with such laws, including laboratory test results, licenses, or compliance reports for no less than two years after the date of the mailing. That update is actually less restrictive, imagine that, than what some hemp industry advocates recommended. Advocates rec recommended. In April, the U.S. Hemp Roundtable sent a letter to the USPS stating that the agency should allow hemp-derived CBD and other hemp products to be mailed, but it said the mailers should proactively produce a signed self-certification statement 
containing information affirming that the product meets the federal definition of hemp and also a copy of the certificate of a laboratory testing analysis to use the USPS service. USPS, on the other hand, is simply requiring mailers to keep those records on hand for up to two years. Which, you know, for a commercial entity, I see that's fairly simple. But for a private person doing that, probably not so much. Anyway, you can read the rest of this here for yourself. But just know that um, it's still slightly confusing. Um, but uh, and, and I imagine also uh, that uh, certain places, certain localities where... Um, uh, they still are not happy about having hemp in their in their zones. Uh, you, you may have a problem with that as well. So uh, I I don't know, but um, you can you can mail your your CBDs and your and your hemp based products, um, but you better have whatever certification came with it. Uh, so when when you go to buy your your hemp products, make sure that you get that if you are planning on sending it through the mail to somebody somewhere down the line. Howdy, Hansel. Uh, so there's that. <laughs> All right. Let's do one more, and then we'll, uh, and then we'll hit some more tunes here. <laughs> oh, boy. Uh, all right. I, I, this is actually a, a weed-based story um, rather than a hemp-based story or a U USPS story. And this is from WLWT5.com, which, again, I'm not really sure. They, they don't really put the cities that they're from up on the top of the thing. Anyway, city council votes to decriminalize marijuana. Oh, that's right. This is in uh, Cincinnati, I think. Oh, I'll, I'll get there in a minute. Uh, city council votes to decriminalize marijuana possession up to 100 grams. Decriminalize, not legalize. They can still steal your weed from you up to 100 grams. Uh, oh yeah, it's his day. Uh, but uh, it's they they won't necessarily send you to jail for it. It's still up to them to pick and choose who they're going to send to jail or not. And it says there is a dramatic change taking effect in the city of Cincinnati when it comes to the possession of pot. The city council decided Wednesday to decriminalize up to three ounces, which is more than almost every other place. Uh, uh, three ounces of marijuana. Uh, the vote came after many weeks of what was at times intense debate. There continued to be honest... You know what? I forgot to put some of those links in there. All right. Well, we'll go back and get them. Um, oh, just that last one, I think. How did I do that? I forgot to put that link in there. You know what? <laughs> uh, sometimes I do. <laughs> it's, 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 uh, it's, it's easier to forget than you might think. All right. <laughs> oh, boy. All right. <laughs> okay. And I'm not even high. <laughs> All right. Uh, anyway, there continue to be honest differences about the amount, uh, about what age appropriate, and the potential effect on criminal prosecutions. There was a lot to inhale about the more permissive pot law that will take effect in 30 days. At that time, you'll be able to legally possess up to three ounces. Uh, you could... What, 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 what? You could still be cited for possession, but you would not be fined and you would have no criminal record as a result. And they would still steal your weed. Uh, so there would be no reference to it required any job application. That, uh, that was the vice mayor's uh, driving impetus. So four of his colleagues uh, joined him to get it done. I would say that since they've been debating this each week, a uh, hundred African American men have been impacted by this law. Smithers and Smitherson said forcefully, "We've got to stop it. We've got to stop it now." One councilman remained troubled by it, while he cheered the restriction on actually smoking grass in public. He lamented the lack of an age limit to have it with you. Which, why? Anyway, um, this is this says it's okay if you're 12 years old in Cincinnati to possess 100 grams of marijuana. Yeah, so what? 
Who cares how old you are? Now, why on earth are we doing that? doesn't make any sense to me. That's because you're a freaking a totalitarian. Anyway, that's that. So in Cincinnati, you can have up to three ounces. Well, you will we'll, we'll be able to have up to three ounces in, in a month. Uh, and uh, all they will, can, will do is steal your weed and possibly give you a fine. It says here they won't give you a fine, but I wouldn't be surprised if they still give you a fine. And some, you know... Yeah, just 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 deregulate it. Don't legalize it. Fuck fuck legalization. Deregulate, just like he did with hemp. Uh, remove it from from all schedules. That's the way to go. Oh, howdy, Zilla, Woodman. All right, we're gonna play some more music right here, right now, for you all. Let's see what we got going on here. Okay, okay. Whoop! God dang, nabbit. <laughs> Sometimes I click something. I'm not sure exactly what, but sometimes I click something that causes one of my tabs to go slide off to a new window. And that that just messes me up uh, when it when it does that. It, it's, it's very annoying actually, um, but whatever. It does what it does. <laughs> yeah, they probably do that as well, Woodman. <laughs> All right, so so we got some more music right here for you. Uh, we're going to kick it off uh, with a Miss Kate request. Uh, actually, a, a request from last week, but we still you miss we still we still miss you, Doc Mac, whatever you want to be called. And this is Doc and Etta James. There, Doctor John and Etta James from back in 1987. Enjoy. You know, ladies and gentlemen, there are people in songs. Ah, yeah, very nice, very nice cover. <laughs> Sorry, jumped in a little early. Uh, <laughs> very nice cover there. Uh, that's the Hollywood Vampires covering David Bowie's Heroes off of their new album, Rise, which comes out next Friday. Uh, and if you're not familiar with the Hollywood Vampires, that there it's, it's Alice Cooper, uh, Joe Perry of Aerosmith, Johnny Depp, and uh, then they throw in a bassist and a uh, uh, drummer. <laughs> anyway, uh, before that, we had R.L. Burnside doing Let My Baby Ride. And we kicked it off there with Etta James and uh, Dr. John doing I'd Rather Go Blind back in 1987. So, yeah, I, you know, it's, 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 all, it's all so good. It's all such good, good music. So, uh, yeah. yeah. I love all that stuff. Of course I do. Of course I do. <laughs> yeah. All right. Let's see how what all we got ready to go. Oh, we'll throw that one in there. Why not? That that's good for grins. Um. Sure. Put it in. Put it into the list. Put it in. All right. So. Uh, I had another one marked here, didn't I? Yeah, there it is. Oh, yeah, that was, that, 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 that's a good follow-up to that one. <laughs> oh, boy. Y'all got any good plans for the weekend? I don't know for me, but plenty of, plenty of work out there in the yard to do this weekend, that's for sure. So I'll probably be doing some of that wonderful, fun stuff. Yeah, you guys are talking about the crap going on in California and up in the state of Washington, but uh, New Mexico now, they're um, they're just as bad now. They're just as bad. It's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a totally nonsense-based, derived state at this point in time. Of course, you know, what state's not? Um, yeah. I don't know. All right, for uh, for Goober, in case you haven't done all these things already, I'm pretty sure you have. Uh, uh, I think you'd, you'd be pretty well set, and and for the rest of y'all too. Uh, this is this is good information. Um, not like a, it's not nothing groundbreaking here. Oh, Cowboy Tech is going to be doing some tractor mowing, and mower and weed whacker type stuff. Oh yeah, that sounds fun. Uh, get out there in the yard and do some crap. 
All right, on the dailycoin.org, yes, the dailycoin.org, comes this article by Max Slavo from the Economic Collapse blog. Six vital things to do. My voice is low in volume. No way, man. Anybody else having that problem? Let me know. Uh, six vital things to do before an economic collapse. Yep. <laughs> with, with signs uh, all over that the booming economy may not be as robust. Thank you, Kebotech. May not be as robust as reported. It may, uh, yeah, to say the least, it may be time to consider the possibility of an all-out economic crash. I'm hoping for one. Before an economic collapse occurs, uh, there are six things you should consider. Uh, to do and prepare yourself and your family, giving you the best chance when it all goes to shit. Stockpile necessities. Yes, that's right. Prep. Uh, this is all, this one should be a no-brainer for any seasoned prepper and even for non-seasoned prepper. Uh, you need stuff. Necessities include, but are not limited to, food, water, water filtration, personal hygiene items, soaps, medicines and uh, first aid supplies. These things will disappear first during any catastrophe and ensuring uh, you are in possession of enough to get you through a few rough months. It, it will be some comfort to ya. All right. Take, I, I don't know, Goober, but all right. Cool. I'm glad it's good now. All right. Keep some cash on hand, it says here. Once the economy does collapse, you will probably still have time to use cash. That window, of course, will be limited, but it is possible many will see the value of that paper money, and you could use it to purchase things you might need. Number three, get a hold of some precious metals. And they're so cheap right now, um, definitely, definitely get the precious metals. Uh, used as a currency from time, from the time humanity constructed a currency system, Precious metals will be valuable uh, to barter with. Consider stocking up on other items that could be used to uh, bartering too, such as ammunition and liquor. Uh, both of those could be traded for items of necessity if need be. Keep an emergency fund. Have a liquid emergency fund uh, could be a great option. If you can easily get to the money, plus... Should food prices skyrocket, they will, uh, you will have enough to cover it without dipping into your emergency prepping food at first. Number five, pay down debts. This one is questionable because if everything collapses, what do you care? But um, do it anyway. You, should, you shouldn't be walking around with tons of debt on your back. The fewer people you owe money to... Uh, during good and bad economic times, the better. Even mortgages should be paid down if possible. It's not the easiest thing to do, but if extra money can be used to pay things down, har harassment from lenders will not be an issue. You won't be asked to repay the money if you don't owe any money. That sounds logical, and therefore everything I suggest, uh, I've suggested you save, number two, three, and five, um, could be used for getting those necessities and essential items to help you through a financial disaster. Number six, learn to grow your own frickin' food. This is a tough one for people living in colder climates, but food can be grown indoors, and all it takes is a few simple internet searches to help you out. If you could grow your own food and you don't eat it all, what? <laughs> if you don't eat it all, not don't eat at all, Okay, uh, it could be another bartering item uh, that you've got on hand. I don't have to tell you how vital generating your own food supply will be in the event of an economic collapse. Uh, there are These are the six most powerful ways one could prepare for an economic collapse. Uh, you should be able, you should be able, um, uh, to recognize the signs of a failing economy. Yeah, just look around and be able to see past the surface of the rosy propaganda offered by the clap outlets 
a quick look uh, deeper at any statistical data shows that things could get ugly economically and when that happens it's likely hap uh, happening quickly uh, leaving those who have uh, chosen not to prepare at a complete loss of course they may come looking for you so uh, yeah, bear those in mind Moose Girl did come in earlier uh, in the day what happened there didn't I paste that in there thought I pasted that in there paste and submit there it is alright okay so um yeah so just bear those things in mind it's good information uh, yeah Moose Girl checked in earlier today um, and said she was having a good time of course um, you know she's at a festival but she's at the, the festivals right there at her at it in her hometown uh, and uh, so she just goes home gets a shower cleans up clean clothes all that stuff so uh, you could look for her tomorrow around the same time so about 2 p.m. my time 1 p.m. your time whatever somewhere in there somewhere in that range <laughs> oh yeah okay we'll do that then we'll do that <laughs> all right from rt.com Russia today Astronomers claim sighting of long lost Apollo capsule Snoopy after decades in space. A team of scientists believes they have beaten the 235 million to 1 odds of finding the lost Snoopy, Snoopy spacecraft from the Apollo 10 mission, and having jokingly pitched the idea that Elon Musk should bring Snoopy home. Two months before the Apollo 11 landed on the moon, right, uh, uh, the uh, <laughs> Apollo 10 mission uh, comprising of a command module, Charlie, uh, Charlie Brown, and the lunar module, Snoopy, performed a dry run of all of the operations apart from, from actually a lunar landing. So, uh, yeah. <laughs> Snoopy. Um, anyway, it says here, Charlie made it home, but Snoopy was lost to the void of space, orbiting the sun somewhere. Or, so we thought, 50 years later, a team of scientists led by astronomer Nick Howes thinks they've beaten the astronomical odds. Snoopy had been shunted around by the gravitational fields of the moon, the sun, and the earth, meaning astronomers had to sift through terabytes of data gleaned from the vast search of the air, search area to try and track down Charlie Brown's lost pal until someone gets really close to it and gets a detailed radar radar profile we can't be sure how's told the uh Chelentham science festival adding that if they could catch a detailed glimpse of the craft it would be really fantastic achievement for science though that opportunity may be some 18 years away. How's all wondered out loud if there was any chance of returning Snoop to Earth? He admitted, though, the scientific value would be minimal and the cost would be astronomical. So, come on home, Snoopy! <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> yeah. There you go. <laughs> Bring it on home. Bring it on home, Snoopy Dog. All right. This is a story that I really like just because hope springs eternal with this kind of news. <laughs> it's posted on Forbes of all places, but here it is. Earth is now approaching the same meteor swarm that wiped out a Siberian forest. Yep. Our solar system is a dangerous place, and this month, Earth inches closer to one of the riskier places, the torrid swarm of meteors. It is a theorized, theorized, not, not necessarily actual, vast cloud of debris and possibly large objects left over from a massive comet's disintegration. 
that is suspected of causing catastrophic collision events in the past. According to Western Meteor Physics Group's data analysis, Earth is now approaching within 30, uh, 30 million kilometers of its center. Uh, such uh, so, so close to such encounter since 1975. It says there is no imminent threat of bombardment by meteors. Darn! Uh, uh, for now, for now. But astronomers want to know if it could be a problem, particularly when Earth passes directly through the meteor storm in November 2032, which by that time, yeah, I, I mean, you know, 2032, I'd probably be dead for a while. I'd be like 92 during that year. So, yeah. <laughs> anyway, why is Earth close to the Torrid Swarm? Earth passes relatively close to the Torrid Swarm twice a year. Uh, the events produce the Beta Torrid's meteor shower from June 5th through July 18th now, and then the North and South Torrid's meteor showers in late October. These are going to be are not going to be dangerous events this year, but Earth's closeness is critically important because our planet, you think it's our planet? That's funny. Uh, it is predicted to pass directly through the Torrid Swarm in uh, November 2032. There are reasons to suggest that we need to be ready for something serious. Meanwhile, the North and so South Torrids in late October and early November could be worth watching for uh, large fireballs. Yeah, uh, meteor storms are always fun. Oh no no no, Hansel, let me let me let me let me straighten that out for you. Hansel asks that I am another moon landing denier. I don't necessarily deny that humans landed on the moon, have a moon base, uh, things like that. But I do deny that what was shown, well, you were probably not even born yet in 1969, but what was shown as the moon landing on television to people around the world, not just in the U.S. of A., around the world, was fake. That was fake footage. That was not on the moon. There's no way the stuff they showed on that, on that television broadcast was from the moon. That is total nonsense. Whether or not people have been on the moon or are still on the moon, have a secret base up there, I would not be surprised whatsoever. I have no, no proof one way or the other of that. But I do know that what they showed to you, showed to us, was a lie. Just like, you know, the 9-11 the story. Absolute freaking lie. Uh, so, they, the government lies. That's what they do. I, I, I don't expect them to ever tell the truth about anything. Ever. <laughs> so, uh, you know, whatever, whatever they're doing, we, we don't get to know that information. Anyway, the uh, remnants of a comet, um, as Earth orbits the Sun, its orbital path often goes through dust and debris left by comets, with matter no bigger than a grain of sand busting into Earth's atmosphere and burning up as shooting stars. Mostly they're harmless, but the torrid swarm, where it says swam here, the swarm is exceptionally a, an exceptionally large cloud of debris, probably from comet 2P and C, Inc. 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 Uh, that scientists think may be responsible for some once once per year, one thousand once per one thousand years catastrophic catastrophic events on Earth. The Torrid Complex uh, giant comet hypothesis proposes that the giant comet fragmented in the old inner solar system, producing dust and small near Earth objects (NEOs), including the 2P Enki and other asteroids still present today. Among the observational evidence in, is increased fireball shooting star activity when Earth gets closer to the Torrid Swarm and increased impacts on the Moon. Why is this on an economic website? I don't freaking know. <laughs> but it is. <laughs> Anyway, thanks, Forbes, for putting that out there. I always, I always enjoy some of your content. All right, we're going to play some more music right now. Um, 
Let's see here. Yeah, this is all right. Yeah, this will be all right. So uh, uh, let's get on to this. Do I got these in the right order? I think I do. Yeah, close enough. Close enough for Freaker's ball, balls to the wall work, as they say. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> We're going to kick it off with a little bit of Rory Gallagher for you. Uh, good stuff there. <laughs> I like it anyway. Uh, the band is called Gang Band Rockabilly. Uh, the track was uh, Ledley Zeppelin, a medley, a medley by Led Zeppelin, of medley, med, a medley of Led Zeppelin songs. Um, <laughs> anyway, they bill themselves as big band rockabilly. Uh, a little different, a little different, you know, but a nice take on, on uh, the Led Zeppelin tracks there. Uh, so, And that chick, man, that singer, she's a cutie. Anyway, we kicked that. Before that, we had the uh, Haima Damasich. Uh, you know, I've played these guys before. I still can't say their name. Haima Damasich. Uh, we're doing Run to the Hills. That there is a uh, Judge Dread Hansel request. And we kicked it off with a Rory Gallagher and Shadow Play from back in 1979. So, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Oh man, I love that music. It's all, it's all such good, good, good tunage, if you ask me. Anyhow, um, of course, I wouldn't be playing it if I didn't think it was good music. So, do what you do, say what you say, think what you think. But hopefully, you enjoy, because uh, that's what we're all about here on the Freakers Ball, on on the Balls to the Wall show is about having a good old time on a Friday night, getting you ready for the weekend, you know? Because, uh, yeah, I, I like having fun on Friday nights. Yeah, I like having fun every night, but, uh, yeah, you know, it's, it's a little different when you get to sit here and play some jams for your buddies over there in the uh, Real Liberty Media chat. Good old, good old freaking time. That's what I say. So, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> oh, man, I tell you. <laughs> Let me do a little quick math here. Two plus six is eight. Plus two is uh, ten plus, what the hell? Oh, all right. Ten plus, uh, is that fourteen? Fourteen, okay. All right, just so I know where I'm at. Just so I know where I'm at. I have to, I have to do that so I know where I'm at. 14. So that'll take me to uh, 40, 45, 46, right in that range. Yep, 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 yep. Alrighty. Oh, I already did that one. I should have unchecked it. I should have unchecked it. Okay. More space news for you. For you from Fizzorg. Fizz.org. P-H-Y-S.org. Alright. Um... Apparently, and I, I guess they're telling the truth, I don't know. It says there's a mass anomaly uh, detected under the moon, your moon's largest crater. Mass anomaly. Hmm, interesting. Okay, uh, a mysterious large mass of material has been discovered beneath the largest crater of our crater in our solar system. The largest crater in our solar system. I don't know if I believe that, uh, but the moon's south pole, Aitken Basin, uh, and may contain metal from the asteroid that crashed into the moon and formed the crater, according to Baylor University study. Imagine taking a pile of metal five times larger than the big island of Hawaii and burying it underground. That's roughly, roughly, Anyway, <laughs> how much unexpected mass we detected, uh, lead author Peter B. James said. Ph.D. assistant for professor of planetary geophysics in Baylor's College of Arts and Sciences, the crater itself is oval-shaped, uh, as wide as 2,000 kilometers, roughly the distance between Waco, Texas, 
and Washington, D.C. Interesting two cities they picked. And uh, several miles deep. Despite its size, it cannot be seen from Earth because it's on the far side, the dark side of the moon. Of course, they say there's not really a dark side of the moon, but whatever. Um, the study, Deep Structure of the Lunar South Pole Aitken Basin, is published in the journal Geophysics Research Letters. To measure subtle changes in Earth's strengths of gravity around the moon, researchers analyzed data from the spacecrafts used for uh, NASA Gravity Recovery and Interior Laboratory, GRAIL. Gravity Recovery and Interior Laboratory Mission, GRAIL. Okay. Um, I don't want to... Uh, when we combine that with our lunar topography data from the Lunar Reconnaissance Orbiter, we discovered an unexpectedly large amount of mass hundreds of miles underneath the south pole of the Aitken Basin. Uh, one of the explanations of this extra mass is that metal from the asteroid that formed this crater are still embedded in the moon's mantle. The dense mass, whatever it is, wherever it came from, is weighing the basin floor downward by more than half a mile, he said. Computer simulations of large asteroid impacts suggest that, under the right conditions, an iron-nickel core of an asteroid may be dispersed into the moon's upper mantle, uh, the layer between the crust and the core during an impact. We did the mass and showed a sufficiently dispersed core of that asteroid that made the impact could remain suspended in the moon's mantle until the present day. Well, well where's it going to go? Rather than sinking to the moon's core. Uh, yeah, well, how, why would it sink? Anyway, another possibility is that the large mass might be a concentration of dense oxides associated with the last stage of lunar magma ocean. Lunar magma ocean solidification. Okay. Uh, James said that the South Pole Aitken Basin, thought to have been created about 4 billion years ago, is the largest preserved crater in the solar system. How can you know that? Have you looked at the surface, all the surfaces of every planet and moon out there? While lar larger impacts may have occurred throughout the solar system, including on Earth, most traces of that have been lost. James called the basin one of the best natural laboratories for studying catastrophic impact events, an ancient process that shaped all of the rocky planets and moons we see today. So I, I have questions. Yeah, that's right. That's right, Mike Brown. Metal up your fucking ass. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> All right, all right, all right, all right. <laughs> oh, now, I, I, I don't even know what to think about this one or say about this one. Maybe you've got some input, Goober. I don't know. Um, I'm going to say, whose business? It's none of your business. But it's the government, so they always think that, uh, they, they, they always somehow believe uh that they have to stick their big ass noses where it don't belong. From ZeroHedge.com The government's next big challenge regulating the sex robot industry. Today in your tax dollars at work news who would have thought that a simple idea like a sex robot could bring with it so much red tape? Well, I tell you, anybody that's ever seen anything the government's ever done would think that that is exactly how it was going to happen. Because, like I said, they have never seen anything they don't want to stick their big noses into. As the Asia Time notes, there are several companies currently developing robots designed to provide humans not only with companionship, but also with sexual pleasure. In fact, some are already on the market. And unlike conventional sex toys and dolls, sex robots may become mainstream. 
According to a 2017 survey, half of Americans think that having sex with robots will become a common practice within 50 years. But this practice comes with a lot of question marks. Our first problem is how to define sex robot. Just because something is attractive to a human and provides sexual gratification, does the term sex robot apply? Or should they be defined as sex toys, which are devices primarily for the stimulation of human genital organs, as defined by Alabama. After all, Alabama is the only U.S. state that still has an outright ban on the sale of sex toys. But it's looking like these robots will be more than toys. They use self-learning algorithms to engage their partner's emotions and offer companionship as well. There's been no word on if they'll be programmable to spoof, to spoof future trades. However, <laughs> take the Mark I robot, for instance. It has been made to resemble the actress Scarlett Johansson and is regularly labeled a sex robot, but its creator, creator Ricky Ma Za Hang, Ricky Ma Za Hang uh, states that it's not the robot's intent. Instead, it's supposed to assist with all sorts of tasks, from preparing a child's lunch to keeping an elderly relative company. And there's also legal issues that will arise. For instance, in 2003 case, Lawrence v. Texas, the Supreme Court struck down Texas' sodomy law and established a right to sexual privacy. There's some debate among circuit courts how Lawrence should be applied to the state's re restrictions on the sale of sex toys. For now, Alabama has been upheld, but should, eventually, should it eventually fail, which seems likely, states won't be able to restrict the wholesale sales of sex robots. A rumor has it Michael Avenatti has been retained to represent the robots. <laughs> <laughs> oh God! All right, all right. We got to do our last set here. Oh, that's terrific. All right. So, <laughs> since we miss Vinny, he's been gone for a week on his his road trip there in Arkansas, going down the river. We got this request here from Mr. Hansel. Enjoy. Black Betty, yeah. <laughs> Stoner Train. Closing it out here for us on the Balls to the Wall program. Uh, before that, we had Kenny Wayne Shepherd honoring John Fogarty, covering his song, The Old Man Down the Road. A Cowboy Tech request before that, You Shook Me All Night Long, performed by She's Got Balls. A little ladies tribute to ACDC there. And we kicked it off with a Hansel request, because he misses Vinny so much. Uh, dueling banjos, the deliverance, uh, the seed from deliverance there on that. I've had a great time. Hopefully you have too. Uh, covered a lot of stories, talked about stuff, talked to people in chat, da 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 da, had fun. I'll be back next week with either another Balls to the Wall or the Frickers Ball. Hopefully the Frickers Ball. We'll see how that goes when we get there. Uh, but y'all have yourselves a great weekend. Don't forget, Dork Table tomorrow, noon Eastern. I'll be on Sunday at noon Eastern with the Blues. We'll play the trivia here in the chat, followed up by Hal Anthony behind the woodshed. And I'll be on Monday night with Grimma Leftover, 7 p.m. Eastern. And check the schedule on reallibertymedia.com for all of the other programs on RLM Radio this coming week. However, Grammy will not be here next week. She's off on Wednesday and Friday doing Grammy-style stuff. So uh, you'll fill in for yourself during those nights. Talk to you all later. Thank you, thank you so much. Love y'all. Peace!